Okay, so it seems uh, YouTube live streaming is working. Let me share the slides. All right, good morning, everyone. So I hope you can see the slides, you can hear me well. So welcome to the first lecture in Projects and Seminars uh, Mobile Genomics course. For today, we will cover the introduction and logistics to the course, and then we will go through project proposals the project proposal session will be uh, private, so we will turn off the live streaming and uh, we will discuss projects for students where they can choose one and uh, continue throughout the semester. So I'm Mohamed Alser and I will be leading this course for this semester. And uh, let me start with the role of this course. Uh, so basically in this course, we will cover basics of genome analysis and we will enable the student to understand basically the speed accuracy trade-offs in using computationally lightweight heuristics versus accurate computationally expensive algorithm. As you know, genome analysis is a heavy workload. There are a lot of uh, computationally expensive algorithms and we would like to replace them with some heuristics that do not hurt the accuracy of the full pipeline. So a student in this course will experimentally evaluate different heuristics some of them we developed ourselves, some of them we are going to develop, we are proposing ideas, and they are going to investigate or evaluate them and observe their effect basically on the end results. This evaluation will give the student the chance to carry on a hands-on project. So most of the projects that we are providing, either using programming skills or hardware acceleration for uh, providing benefits to genome analysis. And they will implement one or more of these heuristics algorithm in their smartphone or portable devices, such as FPGA, GPUs, and they will help the society by enabling on-site analysis of genomic data. The key objectives of this course, multiple components, starting from basic knowledge. So we will basically teach the students all the skills or the basic needed to carry out these projects. So we don't require a prerequisites, for example, except having really strong programming skills in one of the programming languages such that you can really implement these ideas or um, to carry out the project successfully. Um, so the second objective is to provide technical skills in genome analysis for those who never uh, used any of these tools for genome analysis and also critical thinking and analysis whenever you face a problem in uh, carrying out the project. So we are going to teach you how to handle or tackle that problem successfully by doing uh, research or searching the internet or even getting experience from senior researchers such as our own teaching staff and to get familiar with key research directions. So we have really great experience with the past semester in these courses where the students who are carrying out some projects, now the projects are going for publication where they did really great contributions. Some of them join our research group and they are doing uh, basic research in uh, Safari research group as part of computer architecture or bioinformatics and so on. And towards the end of the semester, we will teach you how to present the skills or the outcomes that you have out of your project. So it will give you really technical skills about presentation and what is good, what is not good, what to avoid, what to do in your presentation and so on. So the key goal of the course, first learn how to efficiently implement one of the key steps in genome analysis on portable devices. So the choice is always to the student. The student will choose the project. The student will uh, choose the platform implementation, uh, the implementation platform or the hardware acceleration platform that he feels more confident about using it. So the prerequisites of the course, as I said, there is no prior knowledge in bioinformatics or genome analysis required. We will teach you all the required skills or all the required uh, uh, basic uh, skills for this course. But also we require really good knowledge in C programming language or some other programming languages that are needed uh, for implementing these uh, ideas. It could be as a proof concept, so you can use Python, or it could be the idea is really mature enough so that you need really to implement it in C such that we get the best performance out of it. 
And you really need to have the passion to do research or to research the problem, basically. It's not necessarily to do something new, but basically we encourage everyone to have the, the, the passion to research the problem. Whenever you face a problem, start with Google, search for these technical issues or these error codes. You got more skills or more information about the problem then you try to tackle it yourself. But we will also have weekly meetings so that we can help students to address these things efficiently. So the uh, professor providing these courses is Professor Honor Mutlo, who's a full professor at ETH Zurich since September 2015. He was the professor at CMU US for about seven years. He got a PhD from UT Austin. He started computer architecture lab at some of these companies and he worked basically on, in these companies for some time, Google, VMware, Microsoft Research, and AMD and so on. And we got a huge funding from these companies as well. So I would like to acknowledge that. Uh, the best way to reach Professor Honor Mutlu to use his Gmail email. And as Safari Research Group, we have research interest in several directions, starting with computer architecture, computer systems, hardware security, bioinformatics, and so on. Me, I'm leading this course. I'm lecturer and senior researcher at ETH since September 2018. I got my PhD from Bill Kent University, where I received the IEEE Turkey Doctoral Dissertation Award. Uh, I did my PhD thesis in genome analysis as well, where we build hardware accelerators for different steps in genome analysis. And I would like to invite everyone to follow me on Twitter. This is the best way to, where I share my uh, research experience or more thoughts about the courses. Uh, the main research is in bioinformatics, computational genomics, metagenomics, and computer architecture. I'm really interested in making intelligent genome analysis happening soon. And when I say intelligent, it means fast, accurate, privacy preserving, and so on. So for this course, I have um, more colleagues to help me in the course. So we have mentors. These will be uh, proposing projects as well as mentoring the students who are working on these projects. So we have Juan, who's senior researcher and lecturer. We have Noor. She is a senior researcher at Safari Research Group. And John Fertina, who's a PhD student. We have also Max. Uh, who's uh, doing research with us. He was taking seminar course with us and then he decided to join us as a researcher and he will uh, do his master thesis hopefully with us soon. And uh, many more from our research groups. I invite everyone to check the link to get more information about uh, the people or the researchers uh, that will be helping as well. Okay, so the course requirements and expectations. First, attendance is really required for all meeting. As I mentioned, we will be teaching every week and we will also meet every week to provide more details or to follow up on the progress of each project. So you need first, we already assigned some learning materials over email in the past few weeks. So you need to study these materials and really take them close to your heart so that you can understand the concepts. It's okay if you don't understand something, you can always ask us whenever you feel you would like to discuss more or you have concerns and so on. So we'll have Moodle for this course. You can use that. You can also contact us by email directly. And each student will carry out a hands-on project that will build, implement code and maybe hardware design with close engagement from the supervisors or the mentor of this course. For the participation, to understand, to learn, you really need to maintain a good research cycle. First, you need to question everything, question the problem, why we, are need, why we need to do uh, this project basically, what are the contribution of this project, and so on. So if you question everything, you will really get uh, got, uh, a very solid base where you can stand and fight for your project, where you can implement it successfully. So you need basically to read also relevant papers. You might find great ideas published somewhere in, in the past where you can leverage that idea and uh, implement it in your uh, project. So reading more uh, over the, the weeks and weeks, we will propose some papers to read that are relevant to the project you choose. So basically over the, the, the course, you might uh, end up reading 10 papers or so, but don't worry about that. That is as needed as we go. So when we face some problem or when we need some references to follow up, then we will assign a paper to you so you can read it, analyze it, then come back in the next week 
we discuss these points and see if they are beneficial to us or not. Towards the end of the, the, uh, the semester, we will teach you how to present and you will present to our research group. Uh, we have about 30 members who already uh, have experience in almost all these uh, topics. So they will give you great feedback, I believe. And you need to submit the code through GitHub that we will create for you. So you need to upload all the code, the documentation and so on to this GitHub. And this way we can maintain a good research cycle. So in the next semester, people will join us and they will continue from wherever you stop uh, the project, they will take over, they will maintain a good progress and so on. So again, as I promised, we would really help the project with good progress to get published in good venues. And we have really, as I mentioned, good experience in the past with that. So we will push everyone to uh, go for publication. Uh, we will help you a lot in paper writing and evaluation and getting the results, everything, but that is not a must. That is only for the highly motivated students. The course website, it's already up. You can access it now and you'll find uh, useful information for the course. And I recommend everyone to check their emails, Moodle frequently for the announcement. We will also have the Moodle for question and answers. As I mentioned, please, um, whenever you, you feel you have concerns, uh, check Moodle. You can write questions over there, or you can directly ask us by email. And also for each project, we will have a Glib group where we can uh, chat about the project directly. So it's sometimes it's more convenient that, than the email, but that is on uh, project level. So each project will have separate Glib group. If you want to contact uh, something that is maybe beneficial or uh, useful for everyone in this course, so the best way to reach the question or to tackle the question is through Moodle. Okay, so for the next meetings, uh, hopefully in this meeting, we will discuss all projects, and then we will uh, send you a Moodle assignment where you can choose one of these projects or you can rank them basically that you want or you don't want. And then in the following weeks, we will assign the project to you and we will start doing the, the, um, the, uh, the uh, project progress through the weeks and we will meet every week. And every week we will have about 30 minutes to one hour as a teaching. So we'll teach you basics and the genome analysis as well as you will meet mentors to follow up with the progress. So it's important that you study the learning materials. Again, I cannot emphasize that more. You really need to study it, at least watching the videos to get more insights about the, the topics and genome analysis. And we will start the projects next week. Okay, that's all for the logistics. Now let me give you a brief introduction to genome analysis. I think um, most of you already watched the lecture we assigned. So basically this will not be something new to you, but uh, basically why we are doing genome analysis. So you can see in the picture, there are different individuals, different in terms of phenotypes or maybe genetic material, disease and so on. So genome analysis is to identify or measure the cause of these differences. It could be phenotype, it could be a harmful disease and so on. And to do genome analysis is really useful for many applications, not just to understand genetic variation, but also to predict the presence of uh, microbiomes. So uh, what type of bacteria or virus you have in a sample, how abundant uh, they are and so on. You can also do rapid surveillance of disease outbreaks, for example, COVID-19. So you need to analyze many samples from everywhere to see the existence of COVID-19 and how it, uh, how the evaluation had how the evolution basically of these genetic material going on over time uh, and uh, similar um, ideas. Also, developing personalized medicine when you have uh, historical data for some patients, and then now you get a new patient admitted to the hospital. So, you'd like to check the genetic materials if they are similar to uh, historical data for different patients or another patient, then probably the same medication you were applying to will be benefit for the new admitted, uh, newly admitted patient. And that's what we call personalized medicine. So there are a lot of uh, 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 real applications for genome analysis that we still using in our own life. 
and also some emerging application will appear as we go further, especially when we develop efficient algorithm, the efficient hardware acceleration uh, platform that enable to do much faster than before. Then we can think about a new area for genome analysis, for example, doing genomics in space and such. How to analyze the genome? First, you expect to have a genetic sample. It could be a blood. You want to get the full DNA sequence. However, we don't have any machine that can give you this information. What we have is, for example, this commercial kit. You can get it from pharmacy or store. You can swap a sample. You take a sample from your body, send it back to the company, and then the company will use one of these machines that we call sequencing machine. It could be a really big machine that can be in size as a fridge size, or it could be handheld, as you can see in MinION devices here. However, all these machines doing one common property, which is they provide reads, but not the full DNA sequence. So they provide subsequences of your DNA. And these reads or subsequences really don't have any information about their order or location. So we cannot uh, have any insight about which chromosomes each of these pieces coming from. And for that, we need to solve it as a puzzle. So you have the reference picture, you have these pieces, and uh, applying this analogy to genome analysis, where you can take these, uh, stick these pieces together based on the reference genome, and uh, all the best having the, uh, the, the optimal location for each piece. And this is exactly what we are doing. So we got the reference picture, or what we call reference genome. And you can uh, uh, find it publicly available through this link. You can download it. We got these pieces coming from the sequencing machine, which is FASTIQ file. So each four lines represent one read, which is the second line over there. The last line is uh, representing the uh, base, calling, um, is, uh, base calling score or the quality of the base calling, which is the confidence of the machine when to produce one of these uh, letters or the gen uh, genomic sequence. And it's also publicly available. You can download it from the internet. Now you have the genetic material, you send it to sequencing machine, you get the reads, you map the read one by one to the reference genome. How you do that? I'm going to show you that quickly. So I assume you have the reference genome again and you have the FASTQ file, which is the read set. So you extract pieces from the reference genome you store them somewhere where you can quickly access them. For example, hash table. And then you extract pieces also from the read set, which is the second line, as I said, and you use each of these pieces to query where they exist in the reference genome. For example, the blue piece over there exists here and over there, the green and the red. But it also makes sense since the blue piece here is followed by a green one and the green one is followed by a red one, then it makes sense to check this subsequence for that because they, are, they have the same order as we have in the read. Then we start to do what we call sequence alignment or dynamic programming to check exactly where are the differences and where are the matches, what type of differences we have, whether insertion, deletion, or substitution. This is what we call base by base uh, comparison or sequence alignment. But when we do the analysis, we find that sequencing machine is really fast, can read your DNA in one hour, the full human genome in one hour at 30x coverage. But when we do the analysis, analysis is really slow. And that is with state of the art machines. So I was talking about genome analysis, but also we need this genome analysis to be intelligent. Why is that? Because we want something really fast so that we can handle, for example, patients. And we want this uh, to use intelligent architecture such that we save energy and reduce the latency in doing the analysis. Because when we talk about portable devices, energy becomes a very important aspect uh, of, uh, of the design. The DNA is also a valuable asset, as you will see in some of the projects. So you need to maintain really the privacy of the DNA. If you want to analyze the DNA for certain disease, you don't want to reveal all other diseases to the clinic. So you want only the clinician or the doctor to know about the subject disease rather than all other diseases. Because remember from the one DNA, you can infer the DNA of your brother, of your sister and other family members, only from one DNA of yours. 
We need also to scale the genome analysis. We want to do it at population scale, especially in the pandemic time where you want to analyze everything, everyone, so that you can control the pandemic. And you want to maintain really accurate genome analysis. You don't want to interpret the results as wrong because it caused a lot of harm, especially for the patient when you tell them you have this disease, but actually they do not. And that is important to maintain intelligent genome analysis, which cover all these aspects. Okay, so for intelligent architecture, we still, we don't know where to do the processing. Should we do the processing inside the sequencing machine? Should be in portable devices, in huge devices, over the cloud, or inside the memory device, or inside FPGA and GPU? That is still research question. But we want really to envision this as to have it in the future with a really small sequencing machine where you can do the analysis inside uh, your uh, uh, pocket devices, for example. This is a real device, by the way. We already have it, but uh, the sequencing accuracy is not that high. And the analysis is also very limited for these portable devices. And this is the goal in this course, to investigate more opportunities to enable such uh, compute paradigm. This is for the privacy. I invite everyone to read the paper to get more about the privacy attacks that can happen to our uh, genomic data. And we are pushing towards a new architecture as data movement is really bottleneck these days to move a huge amount of data from sequencing machine to all other parts of the, the uh, compute stack. And you can see data movement really dominate performance and it's really a system energy bottleneck. And uh, for that, we need to decide where to do the processing. Processing always in one part, it's not a good practice because these data are really different in nature. So for each data, for each goal, we need to, um, we need to do the processing in really different component of the system. How to achieve intelligent genome analysis? We still need to answer the question how and where to do the processes that are fast, accurate, cheap, privacy preserving and at exabyte scale, because again, we are targeting population scale at some point. But remember, most speed up comes from parallelism that, that is enabled by novel architecture and algorithm. Developing algorithms alone is not enough. Developing architecture is not enough. You need to do both to do very efficient design. And we have a lot of resources. I invite everyone to go over them, the videos, the lecture, the papers. And I think that's all for the introduction for the course. Uh, if you have any questions, I can take them now. Um, okay, seems no question. I'm, I don't know if we have questions over YouTube, but I think now we are going offline to discuss the projects. So we will stop uh, sharing the slides. We'll stop the live streaming and see you next week for those on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching.